Over the last 50 years, two nations have dominated the railway engineering world, Japan and Germany. These industrial giants built their reputations on precision, innovation, and decades of accumulated expertise in high-speed rail technology. Their bullet trains and intercity express systems became symbols of modern efficiency, marvels that redefined what public transportation could achieve. China, by contrast, was late to the race. Just a generation ago, its rail infrastructure lagged far behind. The country's trains were slow, outdated, and ill-equipped to serve a rapidly modernizing economy. But what happened next is one of the most remarkable stories of technological transformation in modern history. Through a deliberate strategy of technology transfer, indigenous innovation, and relentless investment, China didn't just catch up. In less than two decades, it leapfrogged ahead. Today, China operates the world's largest high-speed rail network, more than 30,000 kilometers of track crisscrossing the nation, linking megacities to remote provinces and moving hundreds of millions of passengers every single year. But China isn't stopping there. In September 2022, at the prestigious Berlin International Trade Fair for Transport Technology, Chinese engineers unveiled something that stunned the global transit community, a magnetic levitation train capable of reaching speeds that seemed almost impossible. This wasn't just another incremental improvement. This was a quantum leap a vehicle that hovers above its track, propelled by electromagnetic force, and engineered to travel faster than any land-based passenger transport system ever built. The Chinese government had poured 30 billion yuan into its development, eight years of research, thousands of engineers, cutting-edge materials science, and the result was a machine that could theoretically redefine inner-city travel. Yet, the reaction from the West was far from celebratory. Skeptics questioned the feasibility. Critics dismissed it as impractical. Some media outlets openly mocked the project, calling it a fantasy, an expensive experiment that would never see real-world deployment. So what's really going on here? Is China's magnetic levitation program a stroke of visionary genius, or is it an extravagant miscalculation? To answer that, we need to understand not just the technology itself, but the broader strategy behind it, and why this train has become a flashpoint in the global competition for the future of transportation. To understand why China's maglev train is being called a game changer, we first need to understand what makes it so fundamentally different from conventional rail. Traditional trains, even the fastest high-speed models, run on steel wheels over steel tracks. No matter how advanced the design, there's always friction. That friction creates heat, wear, and noise. It limits speed. It demands constant maintenance. And it means that even the world's best bullet trains top out at around 350 kilometers per hour in regular service. Magnetic levitation eliminates that problem entirely. Instead of wheels, maglev trains use powerful electromagnets to lift the train carriage off the guideway, sometimes by as much as 10 centimeters. With no physical contact between the train and the track, friction virtually disappears. The train glides through the air, propelled forward by alternating magnetic fields generated along the track itself. The result is a ride that's smoother, quieter, and exponentially faster. China's maglev technology operates in two categories. Medium to low speed systems designed for urban transit and regional routes can reach speeds between 200 and 400 kilometers per hour. But the high speed variants, the crown jewels of China's rail ambitions, are capable of hitting 620 kilometers per hour. That's nearly twice the speed of the country's conventional high speed trains and faster than most commercial aircraft fly at cruising altitude relative to ground travel time. For context, a journey between Beijing and Shanghai, which takes about four and a half hours on China's existing high-speed rail, could theoretically be reduced to just over two hours on a maglev line. That's not just faster, that's transformative, but speed alone doesn't explain China's obsession with this technology. To grasp the bigger picture, we need to look back at how China got here in the first place. 
Two decades ago, China was a rail technology importer, not an innovator. The country's high-speed rail ambitions began in earnest in the early 2000s, when the government launched an aggressive strategy, bring in foreign expertise, study it, absorb it, then improve upon it. China struck deals with German, Japanese, and French rail giants. It licensed technology, invited joint ventures, and opened its market to foreign companies. But on one condition, knowledge transfer. Chinese engineers worked alongside foreign experts. They learned the design principles, the manufacturing processes, the safety protocols. And then, crucially, they began to innovate on their own. By 2008, China had opened its first domestically developed high-speed rail line. By 2015, it had more high-speed rail track than the rest of the world combined. Today, that network serves more than 3 billion passenger trips annually. It's reliable, affordable, and has fundamentally reshaped how people and goods move across one of the world's largest countries. But even as China's conventional high-speed rail network matured, the government was already looking ahead. In 2014, it quietly launched a new research initiative, the development of a domestically designed ultra-high-speed magnetic levitation system. For years, Japan and Germany had been the undisputed leaders in maglev technology. Japan's ESK maglev had set world records. Germany had built experimental lines. But neither country had managed to deploy maglev at scale. The technology remained experimental, expensive, and confined to test tracks and short demonstration routes. China saw an opening. In 2019, after five years of intensive research and development, Chinese engineers rolled out their first high-speed maglev prototype in the coastal city of Qingdao. It was a watershed moment. The train wasn't just functional. It was world-class. It represented a new benchmark in speed, efficiency, and engineering sophistication. By 2022, when China presented its latest maglev iteration at the Berlin Expo, the message was clear. China was no longer following. It was leading. But not everyone was impressed. Western media coverage of China's maglev program has ranged from cautious skepticism to outright dismissal. Critics have raised a litany of concerns, safety risks, regulatory hurdles, prohibitive costs, and the practical challenges of integrating maglev into existing transportation networks. Some commentators questioned why China would invest tens of billions of yuan into a technology that, in their view, offered marginal benefits over existing high-speed rail. Others pointed to the enormous financial burden of construction and maintenance, arguing that the project was economically indefensible. The most pointed criticism? That China's maglev ambitions are all spectacle and no substance, a vanity project designed to project technological prowess rather than solve real transportation problems. To be fair, these concerns aren't entirely without merit. Building and operating maglev infrastructure is expensive. Very expensive. Let's talk about money. Constructing a single kilometer of maglev track can cost upwards of 70 million US dollars. That's significantly more than conventional high-speed rail, which typically runs between 20 and 40 million dollars per kilometer, depending on terrain and local conditions. Why is maglev so much more expensive? Well, the answer lies in the complexity of the system. First, there's the track itself. Unlike traditional rail, which can tolerate minor imperfections, maglev guideways must be engineered with extreme precision. The magnetic fields that levitate and propel the train require perfectly aligned electromagnets embedded along the entire length of the track. Any deviation, even a few millimeters, can disrupt the system. This level of precision demands advanced materials. Rare earth elements, which are critical for producing the powerful magnets needed for levitation, are expensive and subject to supply chain vulnerabilities. The concrete used in maglev construction must be reinforced and stabilized to prevent settling over time. And because the system relies on continuous electromagnetic power, the infrastructure must include extensive electrical substations and control systems. 
Then there's maintenance. Conventional trains can be serviced using existing facilities and standardized parts. Maglev trains, by contrast, require specialized equipment, trained technicians, and constant monitoring of the electromagnetic systems. Every component, from the onboard sensors to the guideway magnets, must be inspected and calibrated regularly. Operating costs are also higher. Maglev trains consume more electricity per kilometer than conventional trains, particularly at top speeds. Labor costs are elevated because of the technical expertise required. And because maglev systems aren't compatible with existing rail networks, every route requires a completely new, dedicated line. Add it all up, and the financial case for maglev becomes harder to justify, especially in a country like China, where economic development is uneven, and fiscal resources are already stretched by infrastructure demands in education, healthcare, and rural development. So why, despite these enormous costs, is China forging ahead? To understand China's calculus, you have to look beyond the balance sheet. Yes, maglev is expensive. But for China, this isn't just about building faster trains. It's about securing a strategic advantage in the global technology race. First, consider the broader economic context. China's conventional high-speed rail network has already proven its value. It's reduced travel times, boosted regional economies, and become a source of national pride. But it's also nearing maturity. Most of the major corridors have already been built. Future growth will be incremental, not transformative. Maglev represents the next frontier. If China can perfect the technology and bring down costs through mass production and economies of scale, it could dominate the global market for ultra-high-speed rail just as it now dominates conventional high-speed rail. Second, there's the geopolitical dimension. Transportation infrastructure is a key pillar of China's Belt and Road Initiative, which seeks to strengthen economic ties with countries across Asia, Africa, and Europe. By developing cutting-edge maglev technology domestically, China positions itself as the go-to partner for nations looking to modernize their own transportation networks. Third, and perhaps most importantly, maglev research drives innovation across multiple sectors, the materials science, electromagnetic engineering, and advanced manufacturing techniques developed for maglev have applications far beyond rail transport. They feed into aerospace, energy storage, and industrial automation. Industries where China is competing directly with the United States, Europe, and Japan. In this light, the 30 billion yuan invested in maglev isn't just about trains. It's about building a knowledge base, training a generation of engineers, and establishing technological sovereignty in a critical domain. But there's also a domestic case to be made. China is a vast country, roughly the same size as the United States. Its population of 1.4 billion is concentrated in the eastern coastal regions, but there are hundreds of millions of people living in the interior and western provinces. Connecting these regions efficiently is both an economic imperative and a political one. High-speed rail has already transformed connectivity between China's major cities. Maglev could take that transformation even further. Imagine a network where trips between Beijing and Guangzhou currently an eight-hour rail journey, could be completed in under four hours. Where business travelers could commute between Shanghai and Chengdu in the time it takes to watch a movie. This isn't science fiction. It's the logical evolution of a transportation strategy that has already reshaped the country once. Moreover, as China's economy matures and labor costs rise, the comparative advantage of speed becomes more valuable. Time is money, and for a growing middle class of business professionals and tourists, saving hours on a journey can justify higher ticket prices. There's also an environmental angle. Maglev trains produce zero direct emissions, and when powered by renewable energy, represent one of the cleanest forms of mass transportation available. In a country grappling with air pollution and carbon reduction targets, that's no small consideration. Of course, none of this means China's maglev program is guaranteed to succeed. Significant technical challenges remain, 
Safety standards for maglev are still being defined. Regulatory frameworks need to be harmonized across provinces. And the question of how to integrate maglev into an already complex transportation ecosystem is far from resolved. There's also the risk of overextension. China's infrastructure spending has fueled economic growth, but it's also led to concerns about debt sustainability. Some analysts worry that expensive vanity projects could become financial liabilities if passenger demand doesn't materialize as expected. But if history is any guide, betting against China's infrastructure ambitions is rarely wise. When China launched its high-speed rail program, critics said it was too ambitious. They said the technology was too expensive, the timelines too aggressive, the risks too great. Yet today, China's high-speed rail network is the envy of the world, a model that other countries are now trying to emulate. Maglev is the next chapter in that story. Whether it succeeds or fails will depend not just on engineering prowess, but on economic viability, political will, and the ability to learn from mistakes. China's magnetic levitation train is more than just a technological marvel. It's a statement of intent, a declaration that the future of transportation won't be written in Tokyo or Berlin, but in Beijing, Shanghai, and Qingdao. The Western skeptics may have a point. Maglev is expensive. It's unproven at scale, and it faces formidable challenges before it can become a mainstream mode of transport. But dismissing it as a joke or a fantasy misses the larger picture. China has repeatedly demonstrated its ability to turn ambitious visions into reality. It has the resources, the political commitment, and the engineering talent to push boundaries that other nations won't even attempt. The real question isn't whether China's maglev train is practical today. It's whether, 10 or 20 years from now, the rest of the world will be trying to catch up. Because if there's one lesson from the last two decades of Chinese infrastructure development, it's this, what seems impossible today can become inevitable tomorrow. And sometimes the boldest bets are the ones that change everything.